Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, March 15th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Akron game in 169 days. The game against Michigan in 260 days. All right, we got to talk about the big news that broke on Wednesday. We talked about it on yes on yesterday's episode for about an hour. Extended live episode. Tony Alford leaving Ohio State to go be the running backs coach at Michigan. Certainly something that was... Certainly not expected news. I keep hearing from folks inside the Woody that, you know, I keep hearing the phrase caught off guard, blindsided. Sounds like this was definitely not something they knew about, which, think about it, makes a lot of sense. So today we're going to be talking about some of the impact, okay? We've processed the news. Now, what is it going to mean this year? What is it going to mean beyond, especially in terms of recruiting? We're going to bring on our buddy Mark Givler of BuckeyeHuddle.com to talk about that. He has a bunch of uh, interesting information he's been sharing with our members at BuckeyeHuddle.com about potential candidates for the next you know, to replace Tony Alford, but also some thoughts on the recruiting impact and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to be talking about all that stuff. But I guess, Mark, before we get to that, I talked about the fact or just a second ago, you know, this this really did catch people off guard. I think not not news you were expecting to hear Wednesday, not news that anyone impact, you know, involved with the program was expecting to hear on Wednesday. How big a deal is this just for the 2024 Buckeyes? You know, I I don't think it's a huge deal um, as far as the actual team on the field this fall. Uh, this this is a run game that was largely going to be coordinated by Justin Fry and Chip Kelly. They've got two veteran running backs who are going to be drafted in the NFL in the, uh, next spring. So it's not like they're trying to develop a young player to, to kind of be the bell cow back this year. I, I, it's bad timing, I think. It's really strange and, and unusual timing, but. I, I don't see this as a huge detriment to what they're trying to accomplish on the field this fall. All right. So now you're going to have a new running backs coach at some point between now and this fall. Could be very soon. We'll see. But you had been hearing, you heard a name that, that was, I think, an intriguing one. We had sort of heard, you know, the, everyone's initial reaction was Eddie George. And then Tim May talked to Eddie George and sort of swatted that one down. But you're hearing now a different name and certainly an intriguing and potentially exciting one. Yeah. Um, the name Robert Gillespie's from Alabama is it running back coach Alabama started to circulate on uh, uh, shortly after the Alford news came out. Uh, I couldn't get anything confirmed. There had been any contact there, but uh, Thursday morning um, I, I was able to confirm that there there's, there's been interest uh, expressed on Ohio state's end. And, and from what I was told, it wasn't immediately shot down. I mean, we saw Eddie George immediately come out and say, nope, not interested, not not doing it. Uh, that's not happened here, to my knowledge. Uh, I've been told they're they're um, somewhat optimistic that he, that uh, Gillespie's actually listening here. And and I think that's going to be the guy they, uh, you know, now that Eddie, I mean, Eddie, Eddie George being out of it, uh, I think that'll be the guy who has to say no next. Um, and that would obviously be interesting on a lot of fronts, just, you know, with his experience at Alabama. Well, and for folks who don't know him, I mean, he is, you know, every, everyone, if you did, you did not work for Nick Saban without being a pretty darn good recruiter and a pretty darn good developer. So that in and of itself is, a you know, two thumbs up kind of recommendation, even before you di dive into anything. But Gillespie himself, I mean, he has he has been a big part of that recruiting operation down there for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, he's been there. I believe this would be his fifth year. Um, he, so he's been he's been a part of a lot of their. Uh, their success running the football with with uh, recruiting five star running backs, top one hundred type running backs, uh, very well respected uh, in the business. And I think the the initial thought was, well, you know, Alabama to Ohio State. That's you know, it's kind of a, a would be a lateral move. But you know, the Kalen DeBoer thing's interesting. Is is Washington or is uh, Alabama going to run the ball uh, as much as they have been with, with Kalen DeBoer now coming from Washington and and the run game maybe not being as big of a piece of the puzzle there as, as it has been at Alabama. Um, and then obviously in, it has to be enticing. I would think not that Alabama doesn't have good running backs, but would have to be enticing to, I would think to work with Quinshawn Judkins and Trevion Henderson, uh, that combination this year, probably the best tandem of backs in the country. So there's at least one name to really keep an eye on moving forward. We will probably be talking about other names on the huddle board at BuckeyeHuddle.com presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse. That is where we talk talk to our members and answer questions and all that kind of stuff and tend to go a lot deeper there than we can on YouTube. So you can, uh, if you're interested in taking a little bit of a deeper dive on that, you can do that at BuckeyeHuddle.com. So now let's move on to really the heart of today's show, which is recruiting. Mark, of course, is our recruiting guy at BuckeyeHuddle.com. So, of course, we're having him on to talk recruiting. 
and really specifically the recruiting impact here, because you're obviously, you, you mentioned the timing's not great in terms of the 2024 season, the timing also not great for the 2025 recruiting cycle, because now you've got, you know, they were pro planning on taking probably two, two running backs, at least in this class. And these are guys who have been building relationships with Tony Alford. And now Tony Alford is, you know, about 180 or 200 miles up the road in Ann Arbor instead of being in Columbus. So, you know, he, this is not, you know, recruiting has not always been great under Alford. They have had some successes and they've had a couple pretty big, bad misses the last couple cycles as well. So how much do you think this impacts Ohio State? Let's start with the 2025 targets at the running back position. Yeah, and obviously that's, you know, some of this is going to depend on who they hire. Um, for, for Byron Lewis out of South Florida, who I briefly spoke to uh, yesterday, uh, he said he didn't really want to dive into it too much yet. He hadn't really talked to anyone at Ohio State. Uh, to kind of see where things were going. Um, I think that one's going to sting uh, a bit. Now, Byron's got some buddies up in Columbus already, if, you know, former teammate Brandon Innes, who's some bunch of South Florida guys he's he's pretty close with. So I think they'll have a chance to regroup just because I don't see Byron committing anywhere soon. And this will be a long, probably a November, December kind of thing with him. So I think immediately that's going gonna, it's gonna to sting a little bit there. I think it stings immediately with Jordan Davison. Here's the interesting thing, though. If they are able to get Gillespie, uh, Alabama is among Davidson's probably top three or four schools. Uh, that would probably be the one guy that could, I think would save this for Ohio State uh, when we talk about Jordan Davidson. I think if, if they don't get Gillespie, if it's someone that Davidson maybe doesn't have much of a relationship with, that could get difficult. Texas, obviously, a huge competitor there, Oregon and Alabama. So. That's going to be, I think, the most interesting one is is Jordan Davison based on who they hire. Uh, with with Lewis obviously having a great relationship with Alford, but also kind of having his guys up there in Columbus already, so maybe they can mitigate that a little bit. And the in-state guys get interesting because it, it's been kind of the thought process that they're not going to get both of the in-state guys. They're not going to take both of the in-state guys, uh, assuming they could get a Jordan Davison. Do they? have to go back and try and get both in-state guys? Does this take them out of the picture for an in-state guy? Does this put them in better position for an in-state guy? My, my personal opinion is that it hurts for Marquise Davis and helps for Bo Jackson. Um, but we will see. I mean, Bo Jackson's supposed to be on campus on March 30th. Obviously, Jordan Davison is supposed to be on campus here 27th through April 2nd, but Jordan told me they're still up in the air on that now with the Alford news. I think they want to digest this first, so stay tuned on that one. So I think there's a lot of different ways this could go depending on who they hire. But I think, again, I think the high, the actual person they hire will impact Jordan Davis in the most. And I think um, from Ohio State's perspective, the new guy will need to come in and evaluate the in-state backs and decide what direction they're kind of going to move with the Ohio guys. All right. So that's the 2025 recruiting impact there. One other thing I did want to ask you about Everyone loves to play Instagram detective, so let's talk about James Peoples a little bit. There were people freaking out that James Peoples had removed some reference to Ohio State on his Instagram bio and had followed Michigan football on Instagram. What's your sense there? I mean, I, I kind of get the sense that this is an 18-year-old who's pretty far from home and, you know, just kind of got blindsided by something along with everyone else around him, and I wouldn't necessarily press the panic button just yet. The transfer portal is not open. You don't, the portal is not open. If your position coach leaves, that's a head coach thing. So James Peoples is going to be at Ohio State at least through the end of spring football. Do you have any sense whether Peoples or anyone else among the current running backs, whether this news might really change the picture for them, any of them? So all that I've been told so far is that it's, this won't impact Henderson and Judkins. Um, there, there were several reasons. Obviously, Alford was a big part of, of getting Travion Henderson uh, here out of high school. but. At this point in Travion Henderson's career, you know, he's playing for a national championship. He's playing, this is money year. Um, he's got a good thing going right now. Uh, Quinshawn Judkins reached out to Ohio State um, to transfer there. So I, I just, none of that would make any sense based on anything I've heard. Uh, so I think they're safe on that. On that. Um, I don't think this impacts, this has not been told to me, but I just know that it's, you know, Dallin Hayden, I don't expect will leave over this. 
In fact, this may help Dallin Hayden. I think Dallin's been a little frustrated with uh, playing time uh, that maybe a lot of people feel he maybe had earned the last couple of years and uh, that Alford was a big part of him deciding that. So I don't think this hurts them uh, from the outside looking in on, on Hayden. This shouldn't hurt them on Hayden. Um, you're right. Peoples is the guy you got to look at right now. Cleveland area guy initially, but, you know, moved to San Antonio. Um, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel to me like they'll lose him, but it is one of those things where, yes, you build a relationship with Tony Alford. You're going to play for Tony Alford. You're coming all the way from San Antonio to Columbus and you get there and you're already kind of going through it as a freshman. Cause every true freshman right now is like, Oh my gosh, what did I got myself into and, and your coach leaves. Uh, I, I would imagine that's very shocking um, to, to lose your coach a week in the spring ball. I would imagine it's very shocking. Uh, Cooler heads, I would think, will prevail here, but that that would be the one I guess I would keep the closest eye on here the next month or two. But again, we'll see who they bring in. All right, well, we will see where the, who they bring in. We will be talking about the names that we're hearing and the guys, you know, the people we're hearing in connection with this job. I've heard the name of a, a different former Ohio State running back in connection with this job. We'll be talking about that on the huddle board as well. So lots of stuff to talk about there. Lots of stuff to talk about with the recruiting piece of things. It is, as Mark said, there's a, he talked about a couple of guys coming in for visits, but there are a lot of visits coming up. This is a very busy time of year for visits as the Buckeyes are in spring football. They will be back on the field next week, minus Tony Alford, but with all the guys that uh, that uh, were there last week, as far as we know, as far as players and all of that kind of stuff. So there's going to be plenty to talk about next week, plenty to talk about all spring long at BuckeyeHuddle.com. We hope you will join us there. Tony, Kevin, and I covering the team. Mark on recruiting. Our whole team of X's and O's gurus making you a smarter football fan. All at BuckeyeHuddle.com, plus the huddle board presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse, where we talk about it all with you. We can be a little more open with you on some of this stuff there than we can on YouTube. So make sure you join us there for all of that and much, much more. That'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.